प्रकाशम अखिलात्मक आजुषुक्ते अहमित्यवभाति बुद्धे समस्त विकृते अभिकारी बोध्रे तद्रह्म तत्वि केवल बोध मात्र तद्रह्म तत्वि केवल बोध मात्र प्रकाशम वन इच इज सेल्फ शाइनिंग अखिलात्मक इच इज ईवन फॉर एवरीबडी नो डिफरेंस आ सुषुप्ते इट इज प्रसेंट ड्यूरिंग ड्रीम डीप स्लीप एंड वेकिंग एक आत्मा ओनली वन आत्मन नॉट देर आर मेनी आत्मन ओनली वन अहम अहम अवभाति इट इज शाइनिंग एज ई ई ई ई अभी ई लाइक दट इज एवर शाइनिंग वृत्ते समस्त विकृते अधिकारी दिस माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट इज गोइंग ऑन चेंजिंग बट देर इज अ चेंजलेस प्रिंसिपल विच इज विटनेस ऑफ ऑल दिस दैट ब्रह्म यू आर प्लीज be that thank you anyone has any question anything to discuss maybe a uh, an experience uh hello hi, hi, hello everyone i hope everybody is well yes hi um, good amit how are you i am doing good i'm doing uh doing very good uh i am blessed to be w- with your company i i think it uh, gives me happiness to be in this meeting um uh, uh um experiences uh that i i have are uh the, the the way at least for me the mind is there's a couple of things that the mind latches on to things which aren't so good in life uh that you know and they're all superficial like in the whole course of things this is not something that uh is uh i would like to remember when i you know in x number of years um so i'm i'm trying to um uh, find ways of uh through through the knowledge to really chip away at the things that how do i know those are the main things because when i wake up those are the first things the first thought i have i i recognize the i when i wake up because it latches on to that one thing mm. which isn't that we is essentially it's something related to the past that i could have done differently mm. it's something that uh is is almost i know the mind is working on it because i i recognize that and the good thing is that's the target i'm working on mm-hmm. and once i and i and i've had a couple of these targets which i've removed i removed one then two then three mm-hmm. but the mind uh, so so uh the good news is i i i i through the through listening uh reading uh up understanding or or internal internalizing and then acting uh i think it's helping me yeah but amit <clears throat> the most important thing one should remember is that what are we supposed to extract or root out one thing and the next thing it is the mind which is giving you these suggestions and the mind is saying okay i've sorted this out 
I'll give you a very good example. Like when there are number of thoughts and, and, and some people, you know, I, I work with doctors and psychiatrists and one of these very good psychiatrists, he said, there's no need to do meditation or self-inquiry. I just look through my thoughts. I select them. I reject them. I select them. I reject them and I'm fine. Like I put them in shelves. But the thing is that who is this who is doing all this thing? Who is putting them in shelves and taking out? It is the ego. Now we need to understand the purpose of self-inquiry or the purpose of all this satsang is to to reach into this eternal happiness where no one is doing anything actually. Mm. And when you are saying that things you could have done differently in the past. But remember Bhagwan's teaching, you know, it is all preordained. Yes, even, that's right. Even a cup yes. of a cup of water you are sipping right now is yes. preordained. Yes, it is. So so then there's nothing to rectify. The only yes. rectification is to detach from the doer and just be the witness. Yes. No, I what you've said is totally true. That is what that is what goes through my mind, uh, knowing that it is all predestined and everything is uh, everything is as it is meant to be, and even to the extent that. Uh, if something is going good and you have the grace of God, uh, maybe things maybe will not go so good because it, it, it's a it's a sign that I think some I was read I was listening to Nocher he was saying if you're a wealthy person and you have the grace of God, he 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 may take that wealth away from you, and the reason is that it it's another uh, means of. Um, testing testing or um, it's another opportunity for you to be closer to to grace as a result yeah. Look, so well, you're you're right you're right it's it's it, it is uh, it is that and that's the main thing I use which is it is all predestined um, but to the memories and thoughts which they come it, it does require that you know this to be, how shall I put it? It's it's the uh, uh, Mahabharata is happening in my brain. <laughs> mm. It is in everyone's brain. It, it, um, that is the that is the nature of the mind. It is restless. Yes. Yes. It does not settle on one thing and jumps from one thing to other. But if if you try to tease apart and try to sort out things in the mind, it's like you are putting yourself into the garbage and trying to, because you can't be selective. Like this is the good stuff, this is the bad stuff, I'll take this, I'll take... Either you accept everything or you reject everything. That is the best way to be out of the mind. Treat your mind as a bad neighbor. I always... This always worked for me. Treat your mind as a bad neighbor. Now what is a bad neighbor is a person you can't change. You can't be friend with that person. If you can't, And you can't make that enemy. So when you're trying to control something, then you are at resistance. And when you are taking, uh, having a friendship with that enemy who is a bad neighbor, again, it will give you trouble because he's not going to change his ways. So how to behave with a bad neighbor who is staying next door? His, that mind is with you all the time. Only in deep sleep, you're not aware of the mind. Rest of the in dream and in waking, you are with that. How to stay with something which is giving you all the suffering and trouble? And again comes the same thing. Just be the witness. Keep quiet. Don't fight with the mind. Just watch it. Detach witness. If, if you try to rectify the way you think uh, I should do this and this thing should have been done in the right way and whatever comes, it's again part of the mind only. It's a thought. Oh. And all these thoughts are arising just because of one I thought, which takes responsibility of all the actions from the past and even for the future, how the life should move mm. and then believes in this whole story and then tries to change, rectify, amend things. 
this one who is taking responsibility and sorting out has to go mind stays or not doesn't matter it is that person that doer the one who is suffering has to go the sufferer has to go suffering then there is no suffering when there is no sufferer there is no suffering suffering is artificial because that sufferer is artificial danger also has to go What has to go? The enjoyer too, not only the yes. sufferer, the enjoyer too. <laughs> so the witnessing or paying attention to this pure awareness, I use the term pure because we are not dealing here when we talk about awareness with mind, with intellect, with feeling of I amness, with the doer, with the body, with mind, with brain, nothing. Uh-huh. just like pure seeing where there is nothing there it has it is not a doer and it does not even own the body it 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 can't say anything it's silence it's pure silence from where everything emerges so try to uh-huh. abide as that pure witness which has nothing on stake so the one in in you which thinks that oh this thought is coming and this is from the past and i'm trying to so that itself is a thought mm. so thought is trying to rectify thoughts and to fix things because what is ego ego is just an i thought that's all but there is in us this pure awareness from where the the best uh, i should say the seat in this theater of all this action from where you can watch everything uninvolved like you can be completely detached and you can still watch and try yeah. to be that all the time so when you slip away into the ego mode and you're trying to rectify then just hang on just sit back and just watch yeah. from that awareness and you will see all the futility of trying to sort out things life yeah. is moving it is flowing there are waves coming and going like you know in an ocean there are millions of waves waves they come and go one day let's say if all these waves decide that we have to sort ourselves what can they sort the only way you can sort is that you just know that you are that water which is the ocean let the waves come and go who cares the one who cares is the problem the one who thinks he has to sort out is, is the problem that needs to be sorted out and and this is what it is it is not an intellectual understanding it is not about reading the text and uh, understanding the text it never works you can keep reading scriptures you will have intellectual understanding but the problem will stay there till there is i thought and mm. to get rid of i thought the most effective thing is bhagwan's method of self inquiry or i call it maybe i am completely wrong but i call it self attention attention mm. on the pure awareness all the time so let's say if you are paying attention on awareness and you get into the ego mode and if you are alert and vigilant you can see where your energy is mm. going so you can just watch and as soon as you watch that energy drifting into the ego mode just stops you get into this stillness and this is such a beautiful simple technique it does not require anything else no external sources and it's readily available to you all the time you can practice in morning you can practice in solitude and when you said that thoughts comes <coughs> with vengeance they are very <coughs> strong thoughts maybe you can't do that time but let's say when that thing settles at some stage then then look who, what were you doing what who was trying to sort out things it is just the ego that has to go the one who is trying to sort out has to go so leave the mind the way the mind is and the thoughts are because you can't sort out because it is because of momentum of your previous interest in things or maybe still there it might be some interest that's why the thoughts are still coming i'll tell you you cannot get even one single thought if you have no interest in anything because thoughts mm-hmm. dances in front of us only when we have interest in things when yes. you have no interest there will be no thought 
So let's say because of previous momentum, these thoughts are coming. You have given that vasana energy in the past, but now you just want to be detached and you want to come back home as pure awareness. Let thoughts come, let them come, but don't engage with any thoughts. If you're engaging, that means you still have interest in those thoughts of any sort. Otherwise, let them treat them as a stranger, as a bad neighbor. Ignore all of them. Don't treat them as your own part. And I'll tell you one very, very important concept about this. Actually, I don't want to get into any concept, but it is the truth. It is the reality. You cannot be the mind. Mind is matter, though it is very subtle, but it's still matter. And mind is destructible, changing. You are that unchanging, pure awareness, eternal. How can two things can marry together? One eternal and the other changing, other one matter and other, the other imperishable consciousness. It is just this wrong misconception which you start feeling that you are this mind. Mind is part of the body. You know, the, you might have heard five sheaths of the body. Yeah. Manomaya kosha is one of the sheaths. So, Anmaya Kosha, Pranmaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vigyanmaya Kosha, and Anandmaya Kosha. So, these are the subtle sheets. So, so, just remember that you are none of these sheets. Though it is like you are living, you are using them to interact. Consciousness is interacting with consciousness using the body-mind complex. But you are not that. Let's say we are using a computer on a, on a Zoom meeting or a webinar. But that doesn't mean that we are computer. We are just, it's a yeah, gadget. Yeah, yeah. So mind is exactly a gadget. So if it's making too much of noise because you already selected those songs and it's playing its music, let it play its music. Who gets bothered by this music? The one who gets bothered by this music is also a thought only. Mm. Mm. There is nothing else except Contemplate on this with practice, with attention, with full attention, with sincerity, with humbleness and respect and pay attention to this stillness in you, which is not, has no stake on the body-mind complex which it is using. Like there is nothingness. It, it never says I am this. It cannot say it has no... Um, no sense of ownership of anything. If you touch that in you, which has no ownership of anything, even the body mind, that is what we all are. And that is what Bhagwan Ramana's teachings are. That was Bhagwan Ramana is our own self. Mm -hmm. Lot of people mistake him as a person and you know, we get into ritualistic mode and that's bhakti also, you know, people love as a as a person, but he is our self with some grace. It has come to us in an external source to tell us that what we are. And if you see all the methods by which you can know this reality, this is the direct because other methods are indirect. Eventually, all methods bring you to this Thing that you are the self. You can go into devotion, you can pray to a god, you can have an idol worshipper or whatever, but ultimately, eventually, you have to merge your ego, that individuality into it. And then what is left is that pure self. Even calling it self is not the right word because there's no right word for it. Actually, there's nothing there. Because what self we know as an individual, when we say, uh, you know, I, I, I have proud, I am proud of myself. This self, what we all talk in daily language, you know, day to day, is that what we think as Bhagwan? That's what we think ourselves, and that has to go. But what the self, the true self is, is nothing actually. There's no one there. Uh -huh. But there is no good word to even uh, mention what it is. It is 
it is like an emptiness but the way you realize is that the moment you touch it the moment you abide in it it gives you contentment and peace it gives you happiness not like a jumping person with too much of joy or ecstasy it can also happen sometimes but usually it's a constant peace bliss mm. and that awareness in which you see that there is there is nothing actually it is the happiness of nothingness mm. this is our innate nature so you have dropped all thoughts because you have dropped the main thought the doership the ego yeah. thought which thinks he can sort out things nobody can sort out anything the one who thinks sort out needs to be sorted out yeah so when the mind is coming back with so many suggestions that i should do this this i did not write and this and actually mind loves it self talk mm-hmm. it is known as default mode network like in functional neuroimaging we know that this is the we it is you know beautifully it is now called as ego circuit or default uh-huh. mode network you can see the lightning of this circuit when we do a self talk when we do daydreaming when we are doing gossiping and the people who are serious meditators for 20 years let's say following any path buddhist mindfulness that ego circuit almost disappears and then there is another circuit which is much more brighter in the brain which we call as attention circuit so this is all by practice we can all change the way the mind works this mind which is looking into things projecting outwardly it is the same mind when it looks within it just get dissolved in this awareness the fire of this knowledge of pure awareness mm. so the only thing needed is even this understanding that's why advaita or vedanta this is so beautiful while you are listening to me and if it clicks it just job is done you don't have to meditate for 20 years to understand it and this is not an understanding by your intellect it can just do the job if the heart is open if the grace is full you are open to things somehow it does the job maybe i'm talking to you it might do it for someone else who knows but how it happens because the truth hits the right system in your software by which just the wrong notion disappears this conviction can happen to anyone even someone who is listening it for the first time it's not that you have to listen to this talk for 1000 time and then it will happen it just happens what can click in what person nobody knows so these pointings are really sharp edgy which can just pierce through the ego and can finish the ego because something which is fake should not survive that long only our interest in ego keep it uh in the living mode as it appears it is a living mode but you still have a question sanjay yes andy um we were talking about the enjoyer has to go um can you overcome the enjoyer through self attention or do you have to renounce everything that you desire kind of thing look if you desire so many things then definitely <laughs> there is a doer there is an enjoyer so i would suggest better to enjoy everything then you know if one is still keen to enjoy things and has that too much of ego mode in it otherwise how can you sort it out if there is an enjoyer there is a doer who is interested in so many things mm-hmm. then the, yeah then whatever practice you do is not going to work that's what i'm saying yeah but let's say 
if because of the previous momentum of your enjoyment your company what you do as work or as enjoyment or the group you are and you are enjoying but you can be a witness to that enjoyment if you have no interest in it if you can be into that disinterested enjoyment you are there and you are part of it but you have no intense desire you are not indulging into it then also you can be free while doing those acts so the same act two people are doing the same act one can be the real enjoying it indulging into it at the ego mode level the other person can be also there maybe doing the same act but not involved even even sensual enjoyment maybe the food let's say let's talk about anything any sensory enjoyment since there can be a, a level of using senses to do that thing but not indulging into it and then there would be a person who has intense desire to this and this can be known let's say you wanted to watch a movie tonight and somehow you can't go and if you were had a real desire what will happen to you will be will be so unhappy but let's say your friends and you made up a program and then the program didn't work up work out and you couldn't go then if you are not at that indulgence level it doesn't matter you know you yeah. could have gone or you have not gone doesn't matter you know so yeah. so the same act can be with an enjoyer mode or it can be as an as a witness mode it's not the action which is so important it's your intention about the action so if you can start staying more like an awareness who is just watching how the body is moving whatever is happening actually i have to say a person in self abidance enjoys the most because he never suffers if the acts happens it's good if the act doesn't happen it's good it is so beautiful i'll give you an example which looks a bit weird but i just want to tell you this it just came to my mind you know in india there is a place known as rishikesh in the northern part of india and there are a lot of sadhus who live there so i, I was listening to one of the uh, sages there and um, they are living like a beggars on monks they whatever food they get they eat they sleep under the tree and the whole time they are into this you know contemplation or they are spiritual seekers and sometimes they get food sometimes they not don't get food so so this sage said that when i don't get food then i eat my hunger and i'm so happy so if you understand this uh, intention or this pattern of how a person can live if a food if food comes it's fine if food doesn't come that's okay i'll i'll can eat tomorrow or maybe after two days a- and then the second question arises what happens if you don't get food for 10 days and you die he said uh, anyway the body has to go one day maybe this is the way it has to go in my case i have to die with hunger you know without food so all this is just you how you take things in your life you know you don't always have to be after things if things are after you you will definitely get them and if things you might not get it then this is the way it has to be but because there is a doer this ego which thinks that unless it acts we are not going to achieve things in life even let's say procurement of food or friends or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a, you know whatever unless we do something we are not going to get it we have to because all our life we have been taught only that isn't it at our home at our school in our society you have to be a doer so the thing is that doership without doership also you, the body is active it will do something but the doership should not be there the action will continue till there is body there will be action the body will be doing something a job or even at home 
I have not seen seen even ninety years old people who are not doing any work. They are much busier than you and me. Ask them; they have no time. I asked them to exercise for five minutes. They said they have no time. They are retired for last thirty years, but they have no time. They said, "Oh, we are too busy," and you, they are taking care of grandkids, great grandkids, kids, neighbors. Oh my God! There are so many jobs they are doing. So this is what the mind is. Mind keeps you engaged all the time. If you can just stay in that stillness, the body has its own destiny. It will continue doing what it has to do. You don't have to push yourself. We are already too busy in mind. If let's say today you wish to retire, I'm pretty sure you cannot retire because the way uh, the prarabd karmas are, things keeps going from one thing to other to other to other. Things never stop. You never know what is coming next to anyone's in anyone's life. Life is changing all the time. You never know what is stored in the next moment. So I, I believe the the one who really enjoys is that supreme self. He is the real enjoyer. He is enjoying his bliss all the time. So if you get good food, good company, which we call as good company, good friends, you don't need anything if you are in your own blissful state. But yes, if those things comes, it is all good. If those people leave, it's all good. You are in your bliss, bliss all the time. You are enjoying it all the time. Because as an ego and as we are conditioned, all the time we think unless. we go to get something from the outside world objects or people we will not be happy this is just a wrong thinking and actually what happens is when you go for a thing when you seek a thing you feel happy because now the mind has settled because mind was after something mind for a, was after a toy you got that toy in a form of an object or a person now the mind says oh it's good then it will go for next thing unless you achieve that it's an endless task of the mind life after life after life so the best approach is if you understand and and it's a practical thing you can apply on your own self how the life has taken you to the level where we all are and if you just abide in the awareness and just watch how things are the moment you try to have this detachment with your ego mode the doership that enjoyer you will know the reality everyone can understand that and i think all of the peop- all people who are practicing self inquiry definitely can understand where the ego arises the way it behaves what it does and even watching that ego helps to finish it off though the process in most of the people is gradual slowly it goes away it takes time it takes its own time depending on how much you still have attachment to things but it's happening in everyone's case it's happening every moment while you are listening to it even if someone is his mind is <laughs> drifting away to somewhere else still there might be something going in but yes it will not happen spontaneously this change for this change you have to pay attention you have to practice and the practice is not to get awareness from somewhere awareness is already there it is all to get nakedness in your reality by giving away all the concepts and your desires all this mind game and the best way is to pay attention what is this question who am i who gets the answer who am i when you ask who am i is there anyone who tells you from inside that yes you are this and this and that you know the answer for who am i 
when we say who am i when you deeply ask this question who am i what revelation we get what what is what realization we get there is complete silence because the one who is asking who am i actually gets silence only and that dissolves in the silence self inquiry doesn't mean that there will be answers coming from within it is the stillness coming within the silence coming from within i ask a question sanjay yes um do you have to keep asking now again the question yes. is who is asking exactly that's what i'm saying i don't ask you just sit that's what i think well then that's the mind thinking of course mm. look till Thank there you. are doubts there will be questions and there is will be a questioner but the moment you touch a stillness all the answers are in that silence in that perfect silence thank you thank you you know the people who have very active mind i'll ask them just to watch one day how the day is going and the mind will comment on the day that i should do this i should do that and this has gone wrong and just don't listen to that commentary just watch the day you can plan your day but the day will go the way the absolute has planned and this is what i always say that sometimes we think that the way we planned it's going on but it's not like that because even that ego mode gets intuition awareness from the same source so 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 many times it's right because it's coming from the same source but then so many times it might not be the way we think things should go and then we feel frustrated but if we look in awareness mode you're always happy because if you have no expectations from anyone or you have no expectations how the day will go then the day is always same there's no change in the day for you because you never planned so unplanned day is always like a planned day isn't it because if you have no planning then whatever happens you are accepting it and you are happy that's why giving importance to thoughts of planning judging liking disliking is the slave of the mind mind makes you slave and then you are unhappy but you you accept the day as it unfolds you don't even pray to the god that the god the day should be very good i should get more money more name fame wealth please 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 this is a stupid crazy prayer you know just accept whatever comes whatever comes there should not be any surprises to you if there is no surprise to you that means you are always in a blissful state
no one can plan anything i'll give you a small example what happened this morning with me i was asked to give a talk because today is uh, world parkinson's day and i was supposed to give a talk on parkinson's so this director of a geriatric division asked me to give a talk and anyway the the talk went fine it all finished but i couldn't see this person who invited me but i thought he might be there you know with a name change on a webinar so it doesn't matter to me but then he called me in evening he said to me that sanjay i sincerely apologize i could not introduce you but the thing is that my father died in india today or yesterday i think and he was at airport and i said what happened he said nobody knows he was he was living in an ashram in india he was perfectly fine i spoke to him and after an hour after i spoke to him he was found dead and now he was sitting in airport and uh, taking a long flight spent 18000 dollars to go i could not believe and then 30 hours halt in dubai to go to india and he was supposed to be introducing me at that talk who plans who plans and he told me that during this covid time there were so many deaths people have to go overseas and do things and someone's parents are sick and i thought i'm so lucky my parents are healthy they are fine and uh, it looked like nothing will happen to me who plans what can you plan what is good planning what is bad planning i think planning itself is bad live in the moment live in this awareness and enjoy your bliss you are that perfect enjoyer don't look for things in the outside that if this will happen then i'll be happy and this will happen then i'll be happy or i'll be happy when i i got rid of my mind or this thought bothers me and i'll try to sort out this thought leave everything as it is accept everything as it is the moment you accept everything as it is actually these things disappear completely it is only our resistance to things our intention to change things which makes them more stronger we give more energy to the mind when we are trying to control the mind but when you pay attention to the pure awareness the one which is uninvolved in anything and this is very important because some people might be paying attention to ego and they are thinking they are paying attention to self and they might be thinking they are doing a good job look within paying attention to the awareness you can call it pure seeing where it is not interpreting things not judging objects or beings not liking or disliking not analyzing not critical of anything just accepting as it is you will not believe if you stay in awareness there is not much to talk because what we talk with others we always say oh this person is good this is bad the food was not good the restaurant had no good service i went there oh this was beautiful always likes and dislikes judging analyzing all this is from the mind domain when the mind is gone that filter is removed everything is pristine everything is beautiful everything is as it is when you go in a forest whatever the way the forest is it is and it looks so beautiful but when we deal with people and things we have so much of likes and dislikes we are using so much of mind 
Look, the real fight is with the mind, no one else. And what the world, what we think where we are struggling is only is the projection of our own mind, where we see other beings. Some beings making us happy, some unhappy. They're, it's all projection of the mind, exactly like it happens at night in our dream. When we see others and they irritate us and they make us happy in dream and the dream is over, then we realize, oh my God, all these people were projection of my own mind in dream. Exactly, exactly it is happening right now. But somehow this ego thought does not allow us to believe this. It is keeping us in this illusion, this maya. How to get out of this maya is the best Bhagwan's mantra, Summa Yeru. Keep quiet. Just watch it without getting involved. And when you watch it without getting involved, actually it all drops. It is staying there because of our resistance or our interest, both rag and dvesh, likes or dislikes. Either we want to indulge. Anyway, I am pretty sure not most of us would be too much into indulgence. But anyway, we still don't like all this mind talk, which now we know is a suffering. But then what can you do? It is our own momentum. Our vasanas have created it. And I believe as a, uh, as a very honest spiritual seeker, you are not giving rise to more vasanas. So let's wait and watch being a witness and with slowly this will stop happening because this is the previous momentum of vasanas which is giving rise to all what is happening around us. When you are not giving more fuel to it, it will disappear. And you don't even have to worry when you know that you have nothing to do with the mind. Just don't engage with any type of thought. Let them come and go. They are not for you. They were all for a person who thought he is the body-mind complex, the doer, the enjoyer, the ego. When you know your pure awareness, these thoughts are coming. It is exactly like when you have moved to a new home and you are getting letters of someone else who was living there. Those letters keep coming and after some time those letters <laughs> stop coming. Because I think the postman knows, the postie knows there is no one living there, you know. That person has gone. Same is like thoughts. They are coming for that doer, that ego. But you are staying as pure awareness. So what will happen if no one is engaging with those thoughts? What will happen? They will be softer. They will be lighter. They will be fewer. And slowly and slowly they will all disappear. And what will be left is pure emptiness. Nothingness. Awareness. Consciousness, contentment, peace, bliss. If you collect garbage in your mind, collect things in your house, collector, you know, have you seen, I've seen patients who are hoarders. You know, these hoarders, they keep collecting things. When the social worker or occupational therapist or a nurse has to go there inside their house, they can't even walk. There's no space even to walk. Can you believe? If they have two bedroom house, it is full of stuff. Don't ask me what. Anything they can get to fill up that house. We are all holders in our mind, collecting garbage in our mind. Garbage of friends, enemies, objects, our CV, our job, our family, religion, I don't know what, all this garbage. And then we try to sort out this garbage, you know. I will keep this garbage, I will leave out this garbage. Why don't you just ignore everything? In this fire of knowledge of pure awareness, all this garbage will burnt out, leaving emptiness. 
and emptiness is bliss. Because it is our real nature, we are this pure awareness, we are not the mind. And the thing is that in this world, there is so many things to do, so much of knowledge to acquire of different things, this relative knowledge, and one life, even hundreds of life or less. How can you live then? How can you be happy if you reject everything or you accept everything? Both are same. Total acceptance of whatever is happening and, and disinterested action in whatever is happening. All these techniques are to quieten your mind, to distract your mind, to free from the mind. You don't give any task to the mind, mind is not going to stay, it will disappear. And this practice is very easy because in this practice you don't have to do anything. You just have to remember that there is no doing. Just witnessing. You know there are people in this world who fight for their rights. They don't know responsibilities, but they, yes, they know that they have rights. And they know they are correct. Be the one who has all the responsibilities, but no rights. No rights. When there are no rights, then there is no person, no personality. This is what Gandhiji actually told. Gandhiji, was, when ILO was formed, International Labour Organization was formed, every country leader was sent a letter by them, what are the rights of labour. They wrote at that time to Gandhiji, because he was alive. And Gandhiji replied back that there are no rights for anyone, their only responsibilities. Everybody fulfills their responsibility automatically, other people's rights would be fulfilled. Beautiful. So it's very simple if you think, think that way. If I take my responsibility, other person's rights are fulfilled. So if that is clearly understood, what is my responsibility now? Be the self. <laughs> so from that, you can develop that idea. Yeah. I will just add on one another small story of Gandhiji, which I heard. In, I read in autobiography, when he was in South Africa, he fought against Britishers because he had a first class ticket and he was thrown away from the boggy, from that carriage. So he won that case in the court. And that day he said that this is the first and last time he has fought a case for himself. He will never do it again. And he kept to his words. He was in the freedom struggle of India, but not for his, any personal cause, because he treated this as his personal cause, you know, my right, traveling with a first class ticket and was thrown away from the carriage. He said, this is the first and last time I've done this thing. I will never do it again. So this is the way this is. This is what all these, you know, like these people like saints and sages and leaders, they all teach us the same true, pure self. where we do for others. Another very simple technique
to stain self is there are two things one is this whole word in front of us and the second is the god within don't expect anything from both nothing from god nothing from the word okay and the second thing is serve this word because it's creation of god service as creation of god just serve it and and for god just love him love god and serve the word and don't expect anything from god and anything from the word and you will be free at this moment because who will serve this word who will serve this word body mind body mind comes from the word only it's part of the matter let it do its job for the word who are you you are that godly principle ishwar ansh jeeva vinashi you are part of that same god serve that god you are part of the god love that god you merge with that let the body serve the word everything is being sorted out in hindi we say dood ka dood pani ka pani whatever is what let it be there and let the body mind be part of the matter serve it and let you as pure awareness be the part of god whatever way you can get rid of this mind get rid of this doership there is no need for doership body is doing its job the way it has to the moment the ego comes it actually destroys everything it is in direct control of that godly principle the absolute will that is letting it do the only will as bhagwan always said the only free will we have is to look within and let the body do what it's doing and in this way we are always free if we follow this technique we will always be in bliss because you are not giving any task to the mind mind only serves to a person who takes care of this body mind complex if that is gone then mind has no job to do then you are always in your own awareness sat chit ananda existence consciousness bliss you are always at your own peace so let's sit in silence in our own peace and let the body mind serve the word and we pay attention to the godly principle within Shanti shanti shanti